Here in China, the MPV segment isn't just about transporting your family. Instead, it's become a playground for the rich, for whom these big luxury people movers have become a status symbol. Today, we're going to be reviewing a vehicle that breathes just that rarefied air, the Voya Dreamer. But this thing is exciting, not just because it's a big luxury MPV with either a PHEV or EV powertrain, but because the EV version is going to be sold in Europe starting by the end of this year. Here in China, a plug-in hybrid Dreamer can be yours for 47 to 58,000 US dollars. However, only the pure EV version will make its way to European markets. There's no official word on pricing quite yet, but it's safe to say it'll be more expensive than here in China, where it costs 65,000 US dollars or about 60,000 euros. I say this every time we review a luxury MPV, but it bears repeating. Here in China, at least, this segment was started by the Toyota Alphard, and its shadow still lingers over the whole party. That's especially true when it comes to design, because most of its competitors just try to ape the outlandish grill of the Toyota. Voya has made it clear that they are not going to follow suit, and by that I mean they've written in their press materials, we refuse the Alphard face. In its place, they've developed their own, more compact but somehow almost as garish front end design. I don't mean to hate, I actually think this thing looks pretty good, especially in the context of this segment, which is basically an arms race of ugly. If they were to come with a simple, elegant front end design, well, it'd be a little bit like bringing a knife to a gunfight. I think the technical term for this thing's size is ginormous. It measures 5.3 meters in length. But interestingly, with the optional air suspension, it can sit very low on the ground, which makes it look a bit sportier than one would expect. Combined with the front end, I think it's probably one of the best looking cars in this whole segment. This high end model also has these quite nice looking dark chrome 20 inch wheels. The air suspension also means that this thing will lower whenever you open the rear door, making it easier for you to load things and take them out. This rear space is impressively large, larger for example than that of the Denza D9, one of its competitors. With the seats up, 427 liters. That's enough space to put in eight 20 inch carry on bags. If you were to lay the seats down like so, and then move the second row all the way forward, you'd have as much as 2,680 liters of space. I regret to inform you that this thing does not have the rising and lowering trick dashboard of the Voya Free, but it does still have a rather large display area measuring 1.4 meters in length. I say display area, not display, because it's split into three different screens. Your instrument cluster, your center screen, and your entertainment area for the passenger. In between are some pretty big black areas like this and this, though right here if you look closely you can see the driver monitoring camera. The entire interior design language is a little bit simplified as compared to competitors like the D9, whereas that thing has a bunch of buttons here on the center console, which I actually like, I appreciate physical buttons, this thing has almost none, apart from here where you have some touch capacitive buttons for your air conditioning controls. Everything else of course is done through the center screen. Material quality in here is actually pretty impressive. The seats are a nice real leather. Quite love this kind of camel brown color that they've got going on. Very simple, very classic. The doors have plenty of soft touch material on them. Physical buttons for your windows, which I've just manipulated right there on accident. Um, overall, it feels like a premium vehicle and it should for the price that they're asking. One area with some pretty impressive material quality is this ultra suede headliner that's available on higher trim level cars like this one. It reminds me quite a bit of the one on the Zeker 009 MPV, which I quite liked. Same here, very soft, very thick, and I'm guessing it's going to help quite a bit with NVH, though we're only gonna find out once we get it on the road. Now it's time for the most important part of any luxury MPV review, the second row. Hit our automatic doors again. This thing, like most of the cars in this segment, has a ridiculous level of features. Let's start with this seat. It has crazy adjustability, including an extended leg support here. It's also got lower back support, adjustable in two different directions, in and out, up and down, as well as forward and aft, and then of course, 
you can lay yourself very, very flat as well. Not only that, in this trim level, it also has massage, cooling, and heating features. Ready to get some work done? No problem. Hit that button and fold out your little work table here. Feels very solid, and just for the record, there's one for this passenger as well. These seats, well, I spent about an hour in them earlier, driving through mountain roads, mind you, and I found them to be quite comfortable. By the time I got out of the car, I felt pretty refreshed. Not always true for Chinese cars that I've driven in. The seats tend to be very soft, but not especially supportive. Thankfully, that's not the case with this one. One other reason I was able to be refreshed when I got out of the car was I was able to adjust my air conditioning to my heart's content. That's done up here using this touch screen panel. Would I personally prefer a physical button? I would, but it works well enough. Not only can you control your air conditioning through this, you can also control the overhead sunroof, like touch of a button, just like that. One thing you will notice that is missing here in the second row versus competitors like the D9 is a screen. There's no screens here on the armrest for controlling your seats. Those are done by the buttons that I showed you before. The air conditioning is controlled up there, and there's no way to control media. Well, there is actually a way to control media, and it's clever, if not maybe as easy to use as a screen. The center screen up there has an option you can hit where it will produce a QR code. You use your phone to scan that, specifically the WeChat app that's very, very commonly used here in China, and then that will allow you to remotely control pretty much every function inside of the car from back here in the back seat. Second row seats, heating and cooling, and the movement of the seat, uh, even the uh, scent that is available inside of the car, opening and closing this, the air conditioning. Honestly, it's not as convenient as having a screen here, but at least there is a way for you to remotely control everything without having to ask the driver, hey, can you uh, turn down the AC for me? There's no lack of storage back here in the second row. If we take a look here on the back of the center console, you can see that we've got this fold open cup holder. Underneath that, you've got your USB ports, a type A, a type C, and another power outlet right there. Underneath, you've got a pull out drawer where you could fit quite a bit of stuff. Cup holders in addition to the ones here, you've got ones on the door. I would have liked to have seen kind of a fold out one here. It's a little bit easier to use, but you know, nothing's gonna be perfect. And finally, Right there, you have a little area for putting your phone. The Dreamer is available with either an eight or 10 speaker sound system. Those 10 speaker units are actually a Dynaudio branded. Now, that's not a laughable number of speakers. It's definitely good enough to hear the music, but it does fall short of the 14 that are available in the D9 from Denza. The third row in the Dreamer is honestly one of the most comfortable I've ever experienced in a big MPV, starting with the fact that you have a really huge amount of headroom. You also have very decent legroom for a third row, and each passenger, right and left side, have their own individual USB charging port behind this little panel here. Finally, you also have electronically folding third row. Now that's accomplished by hitting a button either on the right side here or the left. If I hit the button here, you'll be able to see that lays down that row like this. Now, this button could easily be reached by opening the second door row and just kind of sticking your hand in like that. The days of having to sacrifice straight line speed in order to bring your family with you are in the rearview mirror. This thing with the PATV powertrain makes 420 kilowatts and 840 newton meters of torque. That's enough to get it to 100 kilometers per hour in just 5.9 seconds. While the Pure EV uses a similar dual motor powertrain, without the extra power of the 1.5 liter engine up front, it makes a slightly less impressive 320 kilowatts and 650 newton meters of torque. Even so, it manages the same 5.9 second sprint to 100 kilometers per hour. The pure electric range on this PHEV ain't bad either, 236 kilometers on the CLTC cycle. The combined range, that's the gas plus the electric range, is over 1,200 kilometers on the same cycle. Meanwhile, the all-electric Dreamer squeezes 650 kilometers out of a 109 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack. 
Apart from the drivetrain, the driving experience of this car versus the EV really isn't very different. They both have the available air suspension, which is super soft. Now, that's a great thing on an MPV like this, and indeed, this thing absorbs bumps like almost nothing else. But we have been driving it here in beautiful Yunnan, where we're on essentially mountain roads on the coast. It doesn't really fit in here. This is not its home turf. Body roll? Body roll is very apparent, but this does feel like a car I could sit in and drive on a highway all day long. One big reason for that is the fact that the NVH levels are kept really well under control, even at highway speeds. I'm sure the ultra suede headliner helps with that as I thought it would, but however they do it, it's really, really quiet in here. Driving that full 1,200 plus kilometers ought to be pretty relaxing, not just because of the NVH, but also because this thing has a level 2.5 driver assistance system. That means things like a lane keep assist, automatic lane centering, and automatic lane changes. The Voya Dreamer will be hitting the European market by the end of this year, but a big question remains to be answered. While these luxury MPVs have received a warm welcome here in the Chinese market, will the same be true for Europe? Will European buyers be able to fall in love with the charm of a big luxury electric MPV like this?